Hey guys, so School Trex here, and today I'll be showing you guys every single video game I beat in 2016. So what I'll be doing is I'll be going over each and every single video game, I'll give you my brief thoughts on it, and then I'll move on to the next game. So let's get right into it, because this might uh, end up being uh, a long video because I've got a lot of games to talk about. So yeah, let's get right into it. First up is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Uh, my friend gave me this game as an early birthday present, and I beat this game just a couple days after getting it. It's freaking awesome. Uh, I remember it just being super, super fun. Uh, I would go, I would go back to it occasionally, and it's a blast. Uh, I love the world. I love the hacking and slashing. I love the colors of this game. Everything's just really nice to look at. All the explosions, all the slashes, and like you can see like every sword fragment as you like cut off like like a robot cut in half. You can see like everything come out. It's just really nice looking game. Very awesome game. Very fast paced, and the dialogue is hilarious. Uh, the characters are awesome. Uh, everything about this game is freaking amazing. Uh, I would definitely recommend you pick it up. It's pretty cheap now. Uh, I haven't actually played the other Metal Gear games, but I really want to get to them. Hopefully, in 2017, I'll be able to get to the Metal Gear Solid, the actual, like, not the spinoffs, like, the actual series, and see what it's all about, because I've heard a lot, a lot, um, over the years about the series. So, yeah, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Next up, we have Uncharted Drake's Fortune. Uncharted 2 Among Thieves and Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception all for PlayStation 3. Uh, I beat these sim like one after the other and together these are just fantastic games. Uh, I definitely recommend you pick them up. They're really really fun adventure games and they do get a little bit stale sometimes when you're like exploring because you do the same thing over and over but the shooting is just freaking awesome. Uh, the gameplay it's mostly the same throughout the series, but you can definitely tell it gets more refined in 2 over 1. Everything's more, much more uh, refined in 2 over 1, and then it continues into 3. So yeah, I really like 2 the best, and that's the general, like, that's the general feeling towards with the fans. So, yeah, Uncharted, it's a great series. If you have a PS4, you can get the Nathan Drake collection. It's pretty cheap, uh, but if you have a PS3, you can just pick up the single copies for, like, less than 5 bucks each. So yeah, Uncharted series, it's really freaking good. And this game right here, Fire Emblem Fates Conquest, wherever it might be, but I actually don't have the game. I borrowed it from a friend, and I really enjoyed it, and I beat it, and I just gave it back to him. But yeah, this was a really good game. I really like Fire Emblem Fates Conquest. It's really freaking good. Um, it's got a lot of gameplay elements I really liked. Um, I like how it's a lot harder, but I really did not like the story of the game at all. Um, I'm playing through Birthright right now, so I'm hoping that story of that game is better. Because, uh, yeah, I'm a big Fire Emblem fan, and the story isn't the first thing I look for in a Fire Emblem game, but it's definitely important, so, yeah. And I'm not done with Uncharted, I also have beat Uncharted uh, Golden Abyss on the PlayStation Vita. This is on my Summer Backlog Challenge, if you remember, and, uh, wow, this is a really, really fun game. I really think this game is really underrated, uh, especially over the PlayStation 3 games. Uh, I definitely would recommend you check this one out if you have a PS Vita. Um, if not, uh, if you ever do get around to getting a Vita, I would definitely recommend this. Uh, it's not that long, it's like 8 hours, but, uh, it's a really, really fun game. Uh, I would definitely recommend it if you, um, if you ever get happen to borrow a Vita from someone, you should borrow it just for this game, because it's not that long, it's like 8, eight hours probably, you can beat it, and, yeah, after that, there's really nothing to do, but the gameplay is just really, really good for the Vita. It looks really nice on the Vita. Everything about this game is just freaking fantastic, and yeah, I definitely like this game over the PlayStation 3 versions, but yeah, this is a um, really, really underrated title. And we have Persona 4 Golden. Uh, I talked about this game like so many times on my channel. Uh, basically, it's a JRPG with visual novel elements, and you can, um, what's it called? You can like, uh, Get so you can get social all the characters and stuff, and there's a lot of good character development in this game. Uh, it's really really fun. I would definitely recommend it if you have a Vita. Um, it's kind of on the easy side, but it's really long, and yeah, it gets repetitive sometimes, but it's really really fun. So I definitely would recommend it. Here we have Portal 2 on PS3. Now Portal 2 is just uh, brilliant. Um, so basically, it's a puzzle game with a first perspective where you just try to get traverse through the the puzzles, and you have to get to the end. But it's not that simple because you have the gun which you shoot portals with. Well, you can only shoot it on some walls, and you have to basically you have to use your mind. You have to think um, how how can you get to the end, and it takes a lot of thinking. And sometimes I got really really stuck, so I had to use a guide, which I really didn't want to. But there was some times where I was stuck on like one puzzle for like an hour. I don't know what I was doing, and then the solution ended up being some crazy stuff you had to do. So yeah, uh, definitely recommend Portal 2. Uh, it's really really good. Um, and uh, there's a competitive 
uh, game mode in here, not competitor, co-op, where you can play with like your friends and stuff, and I want to get to that someday, because lo that looks really, really fun. So yeah, Portal 2, great, great game. Next up is Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. I haven't beat, I beat this game in like summer on my phone with emulation. I don't I don't actually have the Game Boy Advance cartridge because I don't feel like paying thirty bucks for it. But uh, yeah, Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. Um, it's really good. I would definitely recommend it. I don't remember much, but I remember my favorite character being uh, Joshua. He was really cool because uh, he has like he's a Myrmidon. He's like a really fast uh, character with like slashing moves and stuff. So yeah. Um, I definitely would recommend the Fire Emblem games on Game Boy Advance. If you have an Android phone, you can easily emulate them um, because, you know, Android's awesome. But yeah, Fire Emblem uh, Secret Stones, really, really good game. Here we have Halo Reach. Now, believe it or not, I'm a big Halo fan, but I've never beaten Halo Reach. So I thought I'd get around to that this year, and I did. And it's just a really, really fun game. Uh, the campaign is just awesome. Um, you have, um, you don't play as Master Chief in this one. You play as, uh, I forgot what the character's name was. Uh, I forgot what the main character's name was, but you can, it's like an avatar basically, self-insert, you can make it male or female, and I there's like a lot of stuff in here, I'm not going to spoil anything, but, uh, yeah, the characters are really, really cool, but something happens to all of them, which I won't say, uh, but the gameplay is fun, uh, I definitely would recommend, uh, Halo Reach, uh, it's not that expensive, um, it's a really, really fun game, so, yeah, definitely would recommend Halo Reach, it's a great, great first-person shooter, and the multiplayer is really, really fun too, so, yeah. Here we have Call of Duty Black Ops. Now, uh, I only just beat the single player, and then I just put it um, just to add another game to the beaten pile. But um, Call of Duty Black Ops this is a pretty fun campaign. I uh, can't say anything um, bad about it, but you know, it's just Call of Duty. So yeah, it's uh, pretty fun. The graphics really nice. So. Here we have Call of Duty 2. Uh, now, Call of Duty 2 is my favorite, um, probably one of my favorite Call of Duty games. Um, I'm not that big of a Call of Duty fan, but this game is just freaking amazing. Uh, it's from 2005, and the graphics for 2005 look just awesome. Um, you know, I definitely would recommend you check this game out. It's really, really cheap, um, and the game's just superb. Um, so you have three different campaigns. One's Russian, one's British, and one's, um, I forgot the other one was. But yeah, you have three different campaigns which are set in World War II, and this game is just freaking awesome. I uh, definitely recommend it. I love all the... You know, I love all the guns and all the gritty violence and everything. It's it's great. Um, definitely, this is a classic, classic game. So, yeah. If you are one of those people who hates new CODs and you're always complaining about that, you can check out the older Call of Duty games, you know. I know Battlefield 1's really popular right now because it's a World War game. So, you know, uh, this is probably one of the... this. If I ever play Battlefield 1, maybe I'll like that better than this. But I'm not, I actually think that takes place World War 1. So, yeah, it's not a World War 1 game. So, this is a World War 2 game. And it's brilliant. I uh, definitely recommend Call of Duty 2. It's good. Here's another Fire Emblem game, Fire Emblem on Game Boy Advance, or Fire Emblem 7 in Japan, because this is the first Fire Emblem game that came here, and I also emulated this on my phone, because Android, and uh, yeah, really, really fun game, I, I love this game so much, uh, Fire Emblem on Game Boy Advance, it's just brilliant, um, it does a lot of things right, um, it's got lots of really good characters, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's got lots of great characters, lots of great uh, story elements, lots of great gameplay elements, everything's just perfect, this is probably my favorite Fire Emblem game definitely, and uh, yeah, hope to one day get a cartridge of it, here's uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon for the 3DS, um, this game uh, wasn't that long for me, it only took me I think like 16 or 15 hours, and what I played, it was brilliant, um, it's really really cool, um, I haven't played the original Luigi's Mansion, um, I want to get to that one day, but right now it's kind of uh, on the expensive side, but uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, this was a really really fun game, I can definitely recommend it. Um, if you could find it for like under 20 bucks. Now that's a Nintendo Select, I think it's worth it. Uh, when I was 40, uh, not so much, but now I think it's worth it. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it was kind of short, but it was really enjoyable. And I actually did not go into the multiplayer aspect, I forgot what it's called. I think it was like Skyscraper or something, I don't know. Um, but it, I actually think that if you play that, then this would really, really extend the length of the game. And it looks a lot of fun, but I don't have anyone to play it with, because I don't, no one I know has this game, so yeah, but. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, it's a fun game. I, I would definitely recommend you check it out. Finally, we have Pokemon Moon. Pokemon Moon is freaking amazing. I 100%ed the Pokedex. I got like 65 hours into it. Um, I really liked the game overall. Um, the music is awesome. The characters are really good. Uh, the story was good too. Definitely an improvement over X and Y. And uh, graphics are just really, really nice. Like, it's so much better looking than X and Y and Omega Black Sapphire. Like, I didn't believe it at first because. Um, I I've just been playing this for 65 hours, right? So my friend wanted to trade something to me in Pokemon X, so I said okay, and I put it in, and I popped it. I played it, and the characters look so much different <laughs> now 
to me from X and Y. They look small, and this one they actually like look like humans, kind of. So, yeah, Sun and Moon. Uh, it's a Moon. It's a great game. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. If you want to play this game with me, just let me know. Um, I'll le I'll let you guys know my friend code. And um, yeah, I picked Rowlet because he's an owl, and I like owls. So, yeah, but. Pokemon Moon, great, great game. Definitely recommend it. And yes, this is definitely a great way to end the year. Pokemon Moon is awesome. So yeah, guys, that's every single video game I beat in 2016. Uh, big stack right there. And some stuff that's either digital or, um, you know, I don't, don't have it on me right now. But yeah, um, lots of great games I beat this year. I'm hoping next year I'll be able to play through some other great games. And uh, yeah, this is the last. This is going to be the, probably the last video of 2016. So yeah, it was really awesome to make videos for you guys this whole year. I believe I uploaded like around almost 70 videos this year, so I think that's pretty good. Um, next year I'm going to try to do more, um, you know, I'm actually not going to say right now, I'm going to save that for a video that will be coming next year, well by next year I mean a couple days, because it's almost uh, 2017, so that's pretty crazy, um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching all the videos throughout um, this year, uh, if you enjoyed as always make sure to leave a like. Comment down below what you games you beat this year, what do you think of the games I beat, all that good stuff. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time with more videos. Peace.